When we start looking at all the kingdoms, there's a whole lot of animals that go in those six kingdoms. So how do we actually put all that together into names that we can understand? Well, it's called a binomial classification. Bi meaning two, two naming classification. Give me a second to jot this down and explain how we do that. Now, just like I said at the beginning, we're going to come up with a binomial name that's going to have the genus and the species name in it. The genus is always going to be capitalized. The species name is always going to be lowercase, as it says in there as well. For example, and they use the same example that I did a while ago, humans are called homo sapiens. This is the genus and the species name for humans. Now, why would the names have to be so clarified? Well, and it's because of the second bullet here. Scientific names are used because the same plant or animal are located in different places in the world. They could have a common name or they're very close, but there are differences between them. So by looking at their scientific name, you can tell the differences. Now, that may be hard to understand, but when you look at this slide right here, this should make it a lot easier. This question I've seen on the tax test a couple of different times. They love this question with this picture. So let's walk through it real quick. The bullfrog, Rana, and I do not know how to pronounce that term, it doesn't matter, is close, most closely related to the spotted chorus frog, Asian flying frog, northern leopard frog, American bullfrog. Now this is a question that really messes up some students because they see the word bullfrog here and the word bullfrog here, and it immediately means that that's the answer. And that's not true. Here's why. You'll notice they have in italics the genus and species name. The genus and species, probably because of its location of where they found it, or named after the scientists who actually found it. If you look, not at the beginning English words, but if you look at the scientific, you'll notice there's only one of them that can be related and it's actually this one. They have the same genus. Their species is a little different because they're found somewhere different from one another, but they're related because of their parts, as well as how they look, the amount of teeth they have in their mouth, the number of fingers they have on their, uh, on their feet, as well as the pads under their feet. Scientists look at all of that stuff. So the genus and species name are great indicators on seeing if two things are alike or not. It does not have to do with the English words. That's where this question becomes tricky. You'll notice this genus doesn't look anything like this genus name. So the genus and species, scientists have learned how to give them names because if they look alike, they'll have similar names. Now this is quickly the idea of animals change over time. And in your biology classes, they talk about things going change. And that may be something that looks like and through things similar parts, how they look. The problem is this vacation. Or